Hey, welcome to the Hampton Beach Village District Monthly Meeting. It is November 14, 2018. Can I ask our uh, Rotarian um, Person of the Year just to lead us off in the Please do. Pledge of Allegiance? Uda Penio? I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, the of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Diane and Jay, you're on first on the list. Are you ready for us? Sure. I hear you have some good news for us. <laughs> <laughs> we have news for you. We have news, right? News. Good news. We think uh, it's well, good. Well, you have news, anyway. Yeah. So, I don't know if I made enough. I wasn't exactly sure. So, take one, and then. That's the one. Okay. If someone wants one, yeah. feel free to, uh, I can email them, email it out. Um, I'm Jay Diener. I'm chair of the Hampton Conservation Commission. Rand Dion. Dion is our conservation coordinator, and uh, we're here. We we were invited here to talk to you about um, our proposed warrant articles <coughs> for this coming year, specifically those that are dealing with flooding issues. And we have two that we think are going to be of interest to you. Um, the first one, and I want to give you just a little bit of background first. Um, it's, it's based on information that's already in our floodplain ordinances. And we've had floodplain ordinances in place for quite some time. Uh, they are necessary for our participation in the uh, National Flood Insurance Program. Um, they apply to structures that are in FEMA's special flood hazard zones. Um, and those are determined by FEMA's flood maps. Um, and as you know, we're waiting for an update of those FEMA flood maps. We think it's going to happen early next year, but we won't know exactly when it's going to happen until it happens. Just to that point, um, FEMA is required to give us a six-month um, notice when they're going to be adopting the new ones, so there will be an opportunity for six months to do public outreach and let people know that those will be adopted. So I know it's kind of hard that the new maps are from 2014. <laughs> they're starting to get to be not so new. Um, but yeah, they are. One of the reasons why they got delayed is that they're actually um, reassessing um, the backside of the marsh. Um, and one of the things that they didn't account for uh, in their first mapping is the actual, the amount of um, wind and kind of wave run up that occurs. The marsh is quite large back there and you get that wind coming across, you can see some pretty decent waves. So they're trying to take that into account in their modeling. Especially today. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, in 2017, um, the floodplain ordinances in Hampton were updated and they, they were reorganized. One of the changes was made was um, an addition of one foot of freeboard, which is uh, an additional margin of safety above the FEMA base flood elevation for new construction and substantial improvements. Um, so in certain flood zones, there is a requirement to go one foot above base flood elevation. And what that means, that one foot of freeboard, is that your first, your first floor of living space plus all your mechanicals need to be that one foot above base flood elevation. Um, what we are proposing, um, and we're proposing this because we've seen, as you all are well aware, we've seen a lot more flooding taking place, as Rayanne was alluding to, um, along the backside of the marsh. Uh, not, not as much more of an increase along the ocean, but much more along the backside of the marsh. So what we're proposing is that in the wetlands conservation district, which includes wetlands and wetlands buffers, um, if anybody wants to elevate their structure um, above the current one foot required base flood elevation, up to three feet, they can do so. And if they're butting up against the height restriction, they can go up to another three feet. So if your house is currently at 35 feet, and that's your, your height limit, and you want to elevate your house three feet, you can go up to 38 feet, and you won't have to go for a variance to get that additional three feet. So what we're looking to do is make it easier for people to make the decision to elevate their structure by reducing the permitting requirements to do so. However, it's only if you're elevating your structure that you can increase your height. And there's a maximum of the increase 
to three feet. If you elevate two feet, you can increase your height two feet. Now, is that for existing property or, or is it for? It's for new construction, new construction or time. substantial improvements. And but substantial if, improvements and, and, and anybody what, who's going to be. Percent? I'm sorry. I think substantial improvements is 25% or so more. So substantial of the improvement is 50% um, or greater of the building's assessed value. So it doesn't include the land value, it's strictly the building. Um, and that's, that's a common um, piece in our zoning ordinance that triggers you know, a lot of building code updates and all, you know, a number of things. So um, it's just consistent with that. Um, I think you were probably about to say this. Uh, if you, let's say, just elevating your structure didn't um, qualify as a substantial improvement, but you were just choosing to, to elevate, let's say, the base foot elevation <clears throat> along the back side of the marsh, the base elevation is nine. It doesn't mean nine feet off the ground. It's nine feet above um, sea level. But let's say your structure was ele at elevation seven. So you would need to bring your structure up to elevation 10. That 9 plus that 1 foot of freeboard gets you to 10. Uh, so you'd be elevating. You could choose to elevate your, your structure up to 10. What this says is if you wanted to go either to 11 or to 12, you could do that as well. And we're seeing more um, applicants want, you know, they appreciate that one foot of free board, and that was a pretty big thing. Not many towns have that. Um, so it was a big thing to pass. But adding this kind of flexibility that if you want to do more, we want to encourage you to do so. And so it gives you that ability without having to go to the zoning board to get a, a height variance if you're, you're bumping up against that. I understand that I've heard that there are presently eight outstanding building permits for people that have applied to put their houses up to raise them. Does that sound right or no? Um, I wouldn't be aware of that from the building standpoint. I mean, I know they process a lot of permits, so it might take a little bit to get it, but I don't know of any that are longer than their the general turnaround period. Um, unless you're talking about a different situation, which is our non-compliance well, I know that one, uh, there's a, there's a <laughs> little private road called Anchor Drive. I think it's yes. Anchor Drive, right near mm -hmm. where I live. Yep. And the house at the very bottom got flooded last year, and they tore it down. Yep. And they supposedly, what I heard is that they want, they're going to build it again, yep. but it, it's going to be eight feet off the ground. And, and you already gave your blessings mm -hmm. on it. My understanding. Yeah, so they, um, so in that zone, the height is higher. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but they were able to, their structure does not exceed, even though it, they're, let me take a step back. Two things, they are elevating to allow for parking underneath the structure. So that's something else you could choose to do is elevate, put your parking under. Um, <clears throat> they, um, even with their structure elevated to put parking under, I think they have two stories, and they're still within their the height limit for Which that zone. Which is 50 feet, right? Yeah, there, I think right? it's a pretty yeah. high one in that, yeah. that area. Mm -hmm. so. There seems to be confusion or concern on the flooding streets that an enormous additional expense is going to be laid on these people. Can you clarify that? What I'm hearing from you is that's not the case. Well, in this particular instance, we're not requiring that they do this. It's a choice that they can make. Um, there is a, an additional cost to elevate a structure, but you have to look at the cost against the benefit. And the benefit is, as, as I'm sure you know, there, there are people whose foundations have cracked or have been shifted through either the January storm or the March storm that we, we experienced earlier this year. So there is some pretty significant damage that can occur as a result of this flooding. Additionally, if you elevate your structure, it's going to have a very positive impact on your flood insurance rates. So you have to look at the reduction, the, the ability to make your structure more resilient against uh, flooding and the lessening, the reduction of your flood insurance rates and, and see whether or not that's going to justify the additional expense to elevate your structure. And the only time this would be mandatory is if you were rebuilding your house to the extent it was approximately 25% of the assessed valuation 50%. of the property, then you'd be required to do this? So the... Well, you, you'd, required, you'd be required to meet the one-foot base flood elevation um, zoning requirement, and that's in place now. That's not something that we're looking to add. That already exists. Would they be required to re meet the three-foot <coughs> if it passed? No. Okay. It's purely optional. 
Right. So if you want to go up above that one foot base up flood elevation, if you want to go to two feet, if you want to go to three feet, that's entirely your choice. If you want to do that and you're butting up against the height restriction, then we're giving you that extra height yeah. without I, having to get a variance. I understand that. So if they were required to elevate because they were doing some substantial improvements, yeah. they would still only be required to go up the present one foot? Correct. Correct. And the other two are optional to them? Yes. Correct. Yeah, I think that clarifies. Yeah, and I, I think the important distinction there, too, is this is for, like, those teardown rebuilds or substantial improvement. Like, if you decided to do, redo your kitchen and it doesn't qualify for that 50% or greater, you're not going to have to. So it's not, you know, it's, it's really those bigger projects that we're looking to do. And so. how does this tie into the yet incomplete flood survey that's going on that the DPW is supposed to get back in December? Are these connected or are you working independently, each of the other? We're, well, we, we're, the, the base answer is that we're working independently. Um, we, we don't know where they are on their study, um, but anything that you can do to get your structure out of the water no. is going to be beneficial. Sure. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's the perspective from which we're looking at at this ordinance. Yeah, I, I would say it, it certainly is derived from the projects we're seeing as a conservation commission and just wanting to give people um, the opportunity to, to be safer if they want to. I mean, that's, and that's it, it, the concept <laughs> makes perfectly good sense. Mm -hmm. and the only danger is that when it becomes mandated, people are going to block out. Right, and that's what we're, we're not requiring. It's not mandatory. We're not saying it's a mandatory three feet or two feet. It's still there's that one foot above base flood elevation. Where's the, the planning board's been quoted in the paper saying they're not fully in support of this ordinance. What's that all about? So I think you guys might be, that's, we have two separate ordinances. So oh, okay. that they are in support of the free board one. Oh, okay. It's not changing what's mandatory. It's just providing flexibility. So I think if you just kind of bracket in that way. The, the next one that we were going to talk about is, is the one that you're, okay. you're speaking to. So Okay, you're um, going to talk about that tonight as well. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yep. Okay, good. That's next. Because I was wondering. Yeah. Correct. That's the new language that be that's being added. Part is already in existence. Yes. Yes. That's what I understand. Yep. Okay. So all you're asking people to do is vote for this additional sentence, the yellow. Correct. Okay. Yep. Which is strict. Um, I, I like I like doing this because it, it gives people it doesn't penalize them for having to do something that makes good sense. Exactly. But I, I see something in here that is I see a, a potential problem with clarity in this thing. Uh, let's say that a house right now is built and has a certain height restriction, and let's say they're at the height restriction. Mm -hmm. That house happens to be in a very, very low area, mm -hmm. and they get flooded every year. They have to go up way above that anyway. If they are at the height restriction now, they're going to need more than three, a three foot. They're going to, they may have to raise it up six feet, and then they go up above that. So, so then they, they would... Go 10 feet and go above that. Uh, it depends where they are. Sure. And they have if they're to next to the marsh, it's one thing. They're that's exactly. Hotel, it doesn't matter. Right. So in those situations where, if there was a situation where they were very low lying, and even just to meet the base flood elevation plus one foot of, foot of freeboard, they're already way over the the maximum height, it would they would have to go to the zoning board. So yeah. So you're right. We're we're only a, a, accounting for that three feet above base elevation, but it, it seemed like we had to set a maximum somewhere, um, and so that. And that I, like I think it. that this makes really good sense the way it's set up because uh, it's consistent with the report and I've mentioned it before, the Coastal Risk and Hazards Commission report that says you only do things in incremental deals, and this is incremental. This mm -hmm. is not making everybody raise everything up mm -hmm. next week. It's saying you do it on an incremental basis when you have to, and only as much as you have to. Yeah. All, it, all it recommends. Well, really what this is saying is it's, it's your choice. Yeah. And if you want to do it, and if you want to elevate your structure, and if you don't exceed three foot above base flood elevation, we're going to take away an additional permitting requirement to make it easier for you to do that, to make it easier for you to make that choice. That's, a nice That's what we're doing. But along with, going along with what uh, Fred Rice said, ma making things mandatory, <laughs> if I know in, um, I watched it on PBS just recently. It was, a, it was talking about South Carolina and the flood 
because of the big hurricane they had down there last year. And it was a state and federal program and some grants or whatever, but um, they offered people, we can buy your property, and then we're just going to, we'll never build again on that property. Or there was money available to raise the houses. And um, whether it was a grant or it was federal or state money. Mm -hmm. um, it involved the flood insurance somehow. So they forgot the clause, we're not going to keep reinsuring people who are stupid. Well, it was something along, it, Fred, point. it was that very type out. of thing, because yeah. they don't want to keep rebuilding in the exactly. same spot and keep having to flood. So it was either buy, they could buy, you know, sell out at market value, or there was some assistance to lift it up high. But without the ass something in place, um, once you make it mandatory, unless you're going to have some money that's going to say, here's the money to do it, um, I think people would have a you know, problem with that. Sure, but again, we're not making it mandatory. No, this is very good. This is optional. It's very so good. I can speak a little bit to that, and we'll probably end up talking a little bit more when we get to the next um, proposed more article. But um, just briefly, um, if you have flood insurance currently and you do experience uh, a flooding event where you have substantial damage, so just like substantial improvement, substantial damage is the amount of damage to your structure is 50% or greater of the um, assessed value. If you have an active flood insurance policy, there is a portion, uh, it's part of the premium that you pay um, every year that goes towards what's called the increased cost of compliance. And so <clears throat> if you have flood damage um, and the, your um, insurance adjuster comes out and says, yes, you know, here's kind of the value of all the damages, they sum it up, go on to our online assessing database, you can look at your tax card, see what your building assessed value is. It gets a little trickier with condos, but we can figure, always figure it out. Uh, if you see that that value is greater than that 50%, you need to get in touch with the building inspector. They have to come out, they'll look at the list of damages. If he's in agreement, yes, this is what has occurred, he provides a letter to the, um, to the property owner that they share with their flood insurance agent, and that letter saying, yes, it's had uh, substantial damage, can qualify you for an additional $30,000. That $30,000 can be used for demolition, elevation, or relocation. So it's a nice chunk of money that is available to everyone that has flood insurance. Yeah. If you were at our flooding workshops this past summer at the second workshop, we had a local resident who chose to elevate their structure that was damaged severely, and they took advantage of that ICC uh, $30,000 grant to, to be able to fund that. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's there, it's available, it's working. And, and that was enough money to, to lift the house, thirty grand. I don't. Uh, pretty much. It, it certainly helps to offset the cost. I can't say for certain that it covers the entire cost, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's there. So, I mean, it's something that people may not, it's one of those things where it's kind of in the fine print, so people may not realize it, but it's, it's there for them to, to take advantage of. Um, Speaking to the issue of flood insurance, right. it is my understanding the reason we are not in the community rating system is there are four, six non-compliant properties that the town and FEMA haven't resolved yet. Correct. Do you know where that stands at this time? Um, it is still uh, being worked on. Um, it's, FEMA is requiring that we develop a, a plan, a corrective action plan, and that's what's being drafted now. Oh. So, and that Cause, will cause address this, what needs to be done on those properties. And This has been going on for about five years, and we're losing a couple hundred thousand dollars of premium reductions through sure. discounts per year. So I was kind of hoping we might be getting close to the goal line. Yeah, I, I wish that it was resolved. It, it's unfortunately a, a process that takes some time and then it's going to take even a little more time, uh, you know, getting those properties into compliance. Um, Are you hopeful that you can? I, I am hopeful, yes. I think some of the things that need to be done aren't, um, they are some work but aren't insurmountable. Mm -hmm. I think they, they can be Do done. Do you have any, in your head, any time, sense of when this might happen? Uh, not really, because it has to, there's, there's a little bit of a back and forth that has to go um, between developing the plan, FEMA <coughs> accepting it, and then out, there's outreach required to get those property owners on board, so it's very property specific. Um, so other than that, we're working on it. That's kind of the best I can Sounds say. Like <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Medicare. So. 
Any other questions about this warrant article before we move on to the other one? That $30,000, is that a grant that has to be paid no. back or is it straight out cash? Nope, that's a great, um, nope, it is um, part of the kind of insurance settlement that you go through, uh, so it's not something that you have to pay back. It is. To a lot of the houses down in the marsh area down mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. um, don't comply with the current zoning boards. Um, they're so close to each other. So what happens if someone wants to elevate and the building department goes not? The stairs are going to be over here. The stairs going to be that's going to happen down here on the street. I yeah. know all the houses. Sure. Uh, so, I mean, it, it does get tricky once you start elevating because you, you are correct. You might need some additional steps to get down mm -hmm. to the ground or you might, I mean, some of it may be that you've got to redesign it and incorporate the stairs within the, the footprint of the structure as opposed to having them bump out. Um, so it, it does become <coughs> a little bit of a, a reworking of the site to make it work. Um, yeah, it can be hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've lived it. Sure. And, and we have a lot of development that predates our current regulations mm -hmm. um, so yeah um, and I mean for me in the projects that I see um, within the wetland conservation district which again is 50 feet landward of the edge of the marsh um, you know I, a lot of parking is a premium so the concept of elevating and putting your parking underneath um, works out well and then you, you've opened up that space on the side where maybe there there was parking to to do something with steps and different things so the mines just denied that just to let you know Okay. He wanted to elevate his house. Mm -hmm. um, they went on, and he said, "I need parking." I said, "Well, you can't have parking." Was he <laughs> like, yeah. "Are you crazy?" I said, "That's your your mother just did it, and now your brother can't do it." And it's on a side street, the Gillis's on J Street. That's and the house I'm talking about. I know that you talked to me about, yeah. and he's not. He's just using the footprint, Same just footprint. going up. And I don't understand that. I don't think this is I know their issue <laughs> as much as the zoning <laughs> boards. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. that's outside of our jurisdiction. Sure. Talk to sure. People about renovating their houses. Yeah. Absolutely. I went through it. It's, it's costly if they hold you up for two, three months. Sure. Is that the planning board or the zoning board that held them up? Who is that? The planning board. Planning board? Okay. I don't think it would have yeah. And it sounds more board. like zoning. I think it's zoning. Zoning. I think zoning, I would think. Yeah, I would think so too. Think it's not zoning. Zoning. So when it's it a single like a family issue. redevelopment, it does not go in front of the planning yeah. board. My so. house was set back by 10 feet on all sides. Mm -hmm. Unusual for me to leave. Sure, sure. And I still had to go through the hoops. I'm just, just costly. Yeah, sure. well. It's well, starting something in October. And you guys aren't doing it until January. Mm -hmm. You know, you're paying the shovel snow every day. Mm -hmm. Basically, so. Yeah, no, it is tricky. I mean, once you get closer to the marsh, you've got environmental permits that take time. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, there are a lot of moving parts that you kind of have to coordinate to, to make it all happen. But, so. okay. Should we move on to the next one, which I think is the most anticipated one? All right, so I should just say this um, re uh, revision to the free board um, piece um, will has been before the planning board um, and they have moved that one to public hearing. Now the next one um, that we're going to, sorry, if you flip your page over, uh, the next one um, is a revision just to our wetland conservation district. So again, our wetland conservation district is 50 feet landward from the edge of a wetland, excuse me. The revision that we're proposing is only for tidal wetlands. So um, the objective is for all new construction and substantial improvements, it's like a theme here, you say the same words, um, that we be looking for those structures that are located within 50 feet to be elevated up on pilings. Um, and, you know, it really comes down to those properties in that first 50 feet, they see the flooding first. Uh, whether it's a high tide flooding event or a storm event, they're right on that edge. So by getting them Elevate it up, we're allowing the water to come underneath, flow back out, you're reducing the damage to your structure, you're going to see um, reduction in your flood insurance policies. Um, we're seeing, again, we're seeing a lot more projects where people are coming in, they have their concrete foundations, whether they've been damaged by a storm event or just the repeated salt water coming in, freezing, thawing, freezing, thawing, weakening their structure. There's, um, it just doesn't make sense to go in those situations to go back with uh, an existing concrete uh, foundation. Sure. I, I think most of you know by now that um, a 10-foot high tide is pretty much our threshold for the beginning of, of flooding impacts on, on our side streets on the marsh side. 
and the projections for 2019 are 55 10 foot or higher high tides and those are regular high tides that doesn't take into account any kind of storm or excessive wind activity at all so you're talking roughly about one flood causing high tide per week mm -hmm. every week of the year right. um, so we're seeing that kind of activity and that and that's up from this past year from 2018 which i think we were at 47 or 49 40, yes. um, high tides yep. so so we just think it's prudent to when somebody is building a new structure or substantially improving a structure to get it out of the way of that water that's coming in much more frequently. Mm -hmm. What is the reason that the um, planning board is not endorsing this? Well, they, they haven't not endorsed it yet. Um, they sent us back to do a little more work on it. Um, do you want to address it? Uh, one of the things they were wondering is, is how many properties are going to be affected by this change. And so <clears throat> that's a pretty much, it's a, a little involved effort um, I was able to get through. I went from uh, Hampton, the the river, up to Boar's Head and up to Glade Pass. So if you really just kind of like our, our main beach area. Um, and I, I literally went around the map and counted all the ones that were uh, within 50 feet of a tidal uh, wetland. And it, it came out to be uh, 225 properties total that would be affected. But I think at least I took away from um, from that meeting, they were just trying to understand, you know, is it just a handful of a property? Is it half the town? Like kind of bracketing what that means. Um, the, the standards that we are looking to, uh, to apply this concept of elevating a uh, structure is already part of our floodplain ordinance. Um, it's just currently applied to the ocean side. Um, so it exists. We're not doing anything new. We're adding it just to that basically to the salt marsh side or the um, tidal marsh side, uh, which would include Meadow Pond um, and kind of up by the Northampton border. Um, one of the, I think, misconceptions that has come out is that, <clears throat> especially along the back side of the marsh, um, people think that, well, if we elevate on structures, you know, we have a lot of single story, kind of same character going on down there with the buildings that all of a sudden you're going to have one that's six feet in the air and one that's on the ground and one that's two feet out the air in the air um, to meet base foot elevation um, again this is elevation nine along the back side of the marsh um, most of the houses we're seeing are only going up at most two maybe three feet so it's not this big change granted if they decided to put parking underneath then you're, you are going to see a, a, a greater change but um, requiring these ones to go up on pilings, I think people initially think of maybe more of the image that was on the front side of this thing, you know, something that's six or eight feet off the ground. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's not in our area. It doesn't have to be if you're just uh, wanting to just elevate your st structure and, and not have parking underneath. The only thing that makes me nervous about this is when you, if it becomes mandatory like that, mm -hmm. how many people are not going to do anything to improve their properties because they don't want to be forced into doing something? So that kind of makes so, sense. <clears throat> so I would say if they do a substantial improvement now, they're going to have to meet whatever base foot elevation is, which is nine plus the one foot of freeboard. So they're going to have to go up to, to 10. It's just we're asking them, when you go up to 10, let's put it on pilings so that the water can come underneath and go instead of a solid concrete foundation. That's, in my mind, the biggest difference the between the two. Is much higher. So, so that, that comes into, but I think that comes back to, I, you. <clears throat> there are some graphics that FEMA has on kind of the cost, um, is it the cost benefit of doing it, right. and it, I, I should have brought it with me, but, um, and I think you may have seen it when Julia Branch from RPC has been in, <clears throat> in previous times, that shows it quickly does pay off because of the reduction that you see in your insurance premium, and, and I, I can send out that graphic, but it, I agree, yes. It is a little bit more costly, but I think if you look at the long-term benefits, I also think if you start to look at the resale potential of your properties, those ones that are elevated, people are going to look at those and feel more confident that they're going to have a safe investment. They're going, they're also going to be able to get a mortgage. I mean, if you're not meeting, and I should take that back, if it's a pre-existing before our, um, our ordinances and they haven't done a substantial improvement or new construction, you can still get it. But um, I think there's going to be, I think our real estate value is going to reflect those properties that have, have taken.
taken that? I would say within 10 years, financing is going to be paramount on the resale value of properties in these areas. Sure. Flood insurance will be secondary because before flood insurance prevents sale, financing will become unavailable and you want to, so you want to pay cash and remortgage a house somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, it just seems we're <laughs> heading that way. So I, people should seriously consider that. My second thought is, is the town willing to abate real estate taxes at all for these people to help them <laughs> transition? Where, considering the town allowed all this property to be built, right. in some parts of the country they're just buying back all these mm -hmm. properties. That's not doable here, obviously, but is, is there any consideration given to the town helping? Again, referring back to the flooding workshops that we held over the summer, at the last of the three workshops, we asked the participants on their evaluation form to let us know what they would like us to communicate to the Board of Selectmen. Um, and they did, and Rayanne and I went to the Board of Selectmen about two or three weeks ago and did that, and one of the questions that came up <coughs> is are there going to be some kind of rebates um, or property tax uh, incentives that are offered um, for people who either need to repair flood damaged properties or who are being proactive and in trying to make their properties more flood resilient before any damage is done. Now, we asked the question on behalf of the residents who are at the workshops, we don't have an answer yet, but, but the selectmen know that this is this is something that people are concerned about this mm -hmm. is something people are interested in and this is something people want to know about they want to know to what extent the town is going to participate in helping them to make their properties safer mm -hmm. um speaking along the point of grant program so when we talked about the icc that's kind of a reactive situation so you've had flood damage and now you're trying to to rebuild your structure um, there is a federal program called the Hazard uh, Mitigation Grant Program. It's, it's a little bit unusual in the sense that it is a, uh, there are funds available and they can be used uh, in a proactive manner for elevating your structure, doing buyout programs, um, relocating. There's, you know, a suite of different strategies that you can apply for. The uh, unusual piece for it is the, um, if you are a property owner, the town has to apply to the agent, the federal agency for the property owner. Um, and that's a very unusual system for us, usually when it's with uh, private property that's you know theirs to deal with and we deal with the kind of bigger, bigger things. Um, so it's a process that the, the Board of Selectmen need to um, learn more about. Uh, we encourage them to have the um, New Hampshire FEMA rep come in mm -hmm. and better explain the process to them. With this um, grant program, there's a, um, you have to provide 25% match. So uh, FEMA will give you 75% of the cost, you have to put forward 25. So we'd have to find some way to either ensure that the property owner has those funds to put towards it, or we'd have to allocate some <laughs> pot of money towards you know doing that. So there's, there's a lot of pieces that need to be figured out as adopting a criteria for selecting and you know figuring out who, which properties we apply for uh, to allocating resources for you know overseeing the grant process. So um, I think it could be a very useful tool. Uh, we just have to come up with a, a process for doing so. Will you, at some point when this kind of comes together, mm -hmm. will you informationally notify the people at risk? of this process of the hazard mitigation hazard grant mitigation process. in particular yeah no i think i think that would be yeah there's no reason not, not to, to make that information as public mm -hmm. as we possibly yeah. can yeah. i'm thinking more mailing or something right. directly mm -hmm. with them not just a sure notice on a newspaper sort of thing yeah no i i, I think that would make sense the people that went to the three workshops were there people there that showed interest in selling out basically Selling it. Were there any, you know, one or two or half a dozen or a dozen? Or I don't know that I can quantify it, but there were certainly people there who had a very strong would, interest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. One other thing. When you talk about pilings, I think about a, a, a crane banging a, mm -hmm. a, a telephone pole that looks like into the ground, okay, down so many feet into bedrock, whatever it is. That's when I think of mm -hmm. piling, when they built this building, 
But they put, you know, they had to, they pounded all these posts in yeah, down a certain amount of feet. Yeah, but you but can't do that with a house unless you lift the house 100 feet off the ground. So what, so what are you, when you say pilings, could you just explain, are you talking about the kind of pilings that go down into the bedrock or? So uh, there are actually what's called helical piles. Um, and so one of the benefits, so if you, <clears throat> you're thinking of those, you're thinking of more just a cylinder that's being pounded into the ground. The helical piles, think of it more as a screw. And the nice thing that, about these is that you don't have to go all the way down to bedrock. Um, the fins around the piling or the kind of the screw part, they, um, the more you move them into the ground, the more um, torque that they have and that torque relates to the amount of pounds that it can support. So you, um, you can do them in tighter spaces and you don't have to go, you can get the fins in different um, widths oh. so that you can, uh, depending on what kind of soils, I mean here we're dealing with a lot of peat, so you do have to go down a fair amount, but you don't have to go the same distance as down all the way down to bedrock. So um, it's, it's a nice option because you, like what you're saying, if you're, if you're having to pound in pilings, you sometimes have to move the house uh, over right. or, yeah. So There's this, no place to this they, can, they can go up, you know, like the clearance of a, a truck or so underneath that, and then they have a, a, a machine that is a hydraulic oh. twisting thing. Excellent. I wasn't a very technical <laughs> term, sorry. I haven't seen that on this <laughs> <technical terms. laughs> but, but you're yeah. seeing, the projects that we've been seeing have all been on helical piles. So Excellent. Um, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of them uh, going on and, uh, and the project you've seen. So there are some of these going on right now. Absolutely. We've Great. seen, oh, good. I think, four, <laughs> and we have, I have two that are in the work. So by, probably by the end of the year, we'll have seen six projects, uh, properties that have elevated on Those are the piles. ones that I asked you at the beginning if there were, there were some building permits out there. I had heard that there was some of these going on. So these yeah. are the ones. Yeah. The ones. Yep. Yeah. And, they, and some of them have been completed, but they're, wow. they're and, all done. Okay. So. so it, and I'm trying to think they're probably ones that are in the mash. We're looking at a one story building that's yeah, used to be, a, so there's a, a, used to be a, a seasonal, and then it was turned into a residential year round. And so now they've raised it. Any idea about it, what it cost? It, it's very dependent on the, the size of the structure. I know, but just, I know. <laughs> just a, was it 10,000? Was it? I don't know that we 50? really know. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you don't uh, have a applicants don't share that information oh. with us, nor are they required to. Right. No, they don't need to, but it would be helpful if, <laughs> if you were able to say, well, you know, a, a, your typical one would cost about twenty or thirty thousand. It would encourage people to say, okay, it's not, it's not out of sight. It's not a right. hundred thousand or you know. Something but there are like contractors in Hampton who are doing this kind of work, yeah. and. You could always talk to a contractor That's and true. Yeah. find They'd out from them what do. the cost would be. Once they've done one or two or three, they get a little Well, even, I right. mean, they might be even being willing to take you on a little tour to see some of them. I mean, there's not, uh, there's a few of them that um, were more um, kind of in between Brown Ave and, and uh, Ocean Boulevard. So they're not, haven't all been out just on the marsh side. So there's Very some, interesting. you know, some of them when they saw the pictures from, uh, you know, the January and March storms where their neighbors oh, yeah. said, oh, did you see how much water? <laughs> those, oh, yeah. those are pretty motivating. Oh, very motivating, yeah. Do you, do you know if the town is experiencing tax assessment abatements in the flooding areas because of the inability to sell these properties? I think the concern has been raised. I've seen, uh, I know it came up some when the um, residents were coming forward last year in support of the um, the drainage studies that DPW has been working on, flooding studies, um, but I have not seen anything from the assessing department mm -hmm. reporting on that. I don't know if they will yeah. be, but. Yeah. It seem logically it will come if something isn't done to offset it. Yeah. Well, all those properties were reassessed upward while all those streets were flooding, and they just won't be existing together much longer, which I would think would incent the town to try to work with these people in terms of some kind of economic support for doing the right thing. Yeah. I, I think I know the answer to this, but I'll ask anyway. I just wondered if when these are, articles are written, if instead of saying shall comply, did you ever say strongly recommend? Does it, does the town want does it need to be forceful? Um, so their regulation, so they, our town attorney, they tend to be shy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I don't Maybe know how you can really <laughs> write strongly recommend into an ordinance. I just thought maybe this is give people the idea that this is what they should be doing. Yeah. That's what we do right now. When people come to us with projects, we say, hey, have you thought about? Um, and yeah. so this is taking that support. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. When you um, inventoried uh, the area that you described, you yeah. said you had 225 yeah. that would be or that have been affected by. So I didn't distinguish. So I just said that there are. That's a big, that's a big difference between what we think would be and what already has so I went on our online GIS and I uh, went around um, all the streets and counted the number of uh, properties that have structures on them that were within 50 feet of the tidal marsh. And so between Hampton Harbor, uh, Great Boar's Head, and over to Glade Path in that area, there was uh, right around 225 properties that I counted. The other ones you can deal with practically are the ones that have experienced it, maybe the ones that are close to that right now. Because if you go too far on the theoretical, it might happen. You lose support for right and so I mean that's where that first 50 foot piece I mean as mm -hmm. I, I said earlier I mean those go those are on the front line of every flooding event that we experience you know it's not like we brought it in 300 feet or right. you know 50 foot a lot the uh, width of a lot on some of us yeah so I mean if you think about it other than the the streets that go far out into the marsh where you have you know several properties at the end I mean typically it's like the last two houses at the end of the street the last two houses that's not true. What do you My mean? street doesn't flood. I'm talking about the properties that border the marsh. Yeah, Chagall mm -hmm. Ave borders the marsh. We we don't flood. Chagall well, Ave so, doesn't flood. Mm -hmm. I'm we, saying we, in general, it's typically the ones at the end. I did it by street, and you're right. There are a few streets that don't don't have any, but they didn't flooded. border the yeah. the marsh. So the Brad Ave over there is a couple on the further side, not right behind me, they flood, but not right close to us over on our street, they don't flood. Okay. Yeah, I'm just talking about properties that are adjacent to the marsh. So it would be fine. I, I think you might have a little bit of trouble with the concept of tax credits or tax reductions for people who are out in flooded areas. Uh, it's just like people who build on hillsides in California and they don't clear their brush I, th I think that the people who are not here and subject to it, they're saying, why should I pay mm -hmm. more in taxes to make up for those people who are stupid enough to build in a place where they may get flooded every year? And hey, I, think that's, I think that's going to get a lot of pushback. There may or may not be if those people understand the whole town may not exist but, unless these issues are addressed. Now, it's not just the flood zone. Flooding is much greater than the backside of the street. I saw this happen in, in California. If, if you want to have the luxury of living in a beautiful place that has all these things that you want, then you're going to have to pay the premium for the hazards that come along with it out of your own pocket and not make your neighbor take care of it. Well, the principle of insurance is shared risk, not individual risk. I'm talking taxes. The taxes are a form, no, a taxes are a form of shared risk. We all contribute. Yeah, they're, a, they're a form of cost. They're, they're shared risk. I pay for your public way. I live on a private way. So you can go up the street in many different ways. The bottom line is, as a community, let's see what we can do to help each other. So the, the tax issue is, is something that the Board of Selectmen is going to have to wrestle with, and, with and, no. and try to come up with an answer that is both in the best interests of the residents who are affected, the residents at large, the town as a whole. Um, well, I think they've got an incentive to do the right thing because it's going to be more expensive for the town if abatements are the alternative. Mm -hmm. uh, and there, you know, objectively, it's only a matter of time before that happens if it's not addressed. Uh, we're not trying to put you in the know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I have one. The, we had a Warren article last year. And I don't remember the amount of money, but it, it was a pretty substantial amount to do a flood study. Right. Are you involved with that? We not directly. Not. Those are being uh, managed by the Department of Public Works. Mm -hmm. And there were two of them that were passed. Yes. One that's was what for, we're waiting on now. Okay. Right. So, so that's, that's what they talked about earlier. I just wondered if you, but you're not involved, so you don't have any information for us. I look forward anything. to seeing the results of it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's really curious. We all do, I mean, yeah. you know? Yeah. Sure. Um, sure. They, yeah. I, my understanding was they expect it in December. Have you heard that? 
I, I only had heard that they had selected the consultant and then, you know, the consultants end up doing their own thing. And, no. um, but We don't know how long that process no. is going to be. Once no. they've hired a consultant, how long they need to do mm -hmm. the research and develop a report and recommendations. I'm hopeful that they will be doing some, uh, you know, either reporting back to the Board of Selectmen with <coughs> their findings or you guys could have them come down here and share them. Like, I well, hope they the will do some DPW outreach. DPW has agreed to come here once the report Once I have them. Good, good. Yeah. I think that'll be well, important. Not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about these warrant articles? I really appreciate all the efforts you people do put in. Then you as a community we can kind of get through all this. Well, we know it's it's clearly a problem in Hampton, and it's becoming more and more of a problem. And uh, you know, so we're trying to find ways to help people make their properties more resilient. Mm -hmm. um, because at this point, that's what we have the ability to do. And, and we, our jurisdiction is the Wetlands Conservation District. Um, so we're doing what we can to help property owners within that area, uh, the wetlands, the wetlands buffer, um, to, again, to make their properties more resilient, to retain the value of their properties to the extent possible, to feel more comfortable, safer in their homes. Yeah. I mean, in interestingly enough, too, I mean, there's a lot of overlap between our well and conservation district and the floodplain ordinance. And, you know, I think the Conservation Commission has always been kind of the champion for the wetland conservation district, which is great, but there hasn't really been a champion for the floodplain ordinance. And so we're trying to kind of, when we're evaluating wetland applications, making sure we're taking a look at the floodplain ordinance and making sure people are aware and just trying to kind of blend you the two together. Obviously, appreciate the precinct. Geographically, is the most at risk mm -hmm. part of the town. Certainly. So we do have a dog in this fight, I think. <laughs> Certainly. A big dog. So I'd like to um, maybe if we can make a motion. Now we have no no um, authority to endorse, but we can make a motion to strongly recommend that the planning board. How's that? <coughs> uh, strongly make a, recommend that the planning board move forward on these zoning and articles. I, I think a motion like that is very useful in our conversations with them. You know, like I said, we have to go, we have a public hearing on the uh, the first one, the free board one, um, but then we will be, you know, talking about this one again and hopefully getting their support uh, to move forward with this one. All right, but just to understand, mm -hmm. we're not, understand. it doesn't go on the ballot, we're not, saying we're, 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 well, I understand. So yeah, do I have that motion? Do we want to make that motion? Yeah, I move that we support the two zoning ordinances as recommended by the Conservation Commission. I will second. Discussion? Oh, Do we think, think we want to say as recommended or to move forward? Because they, they, they're looking for some input on the second one. I don't want to tie up anything. Well, so. they'll be, I'm sure you folks will be making additional recommendations in the bypass. Whatever you and the planning board can agree on, is that acceptable? Sure. I mean, the the alternative too is, you know, if the, let's say with the second one, we went forward with the planning board, and they were still feeling unsure about it. I mean, there's always an opportunity to do a petition warrant article separately. So, there are two avenues for. We our preference is always to to have their support for a warrant sure. article. But. Would you consider a petition warrant article if you didn't have their support, or is that an unfair question? We where they go first. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, um, and it. Number one, we want to see what we can do with the planning board, and number two, we would need to get the support of the entire Conservation Commission to go the route of a petition warrant article, and we haven't had that discussion yet. Okay. Well, maybe we could agree on the first one and leave the second one open until they review it with the planning board? Sure, so how do you want to word it? Okay. I would move that the village district support your first warrant article concerning Free board elevation mm -hmm. and Save recommend anything. that the planning board adopt it the, when it goes on the warrant. Uh, okay. The um, first yeah, article, I could I have a second? free board elevation. Do I have a second? Could, could you just repeat that for her, for Joni? No. She, yes, you can. <laughs> <laughs> repeat the goal. She's got to take that down. Good. Do no, it right. The, I move that the village district yep. support the Warren article as presented by the Conservation Commission to elevate freeboarding from one foot to three feet. 
Second. And I will second that motion. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah, so would it be appropriate if um, we go in front of the planning board to discuss the second one to say that we've been before you guys and that you guys Absolutely. at least are supportive of it or? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. That's great. Super. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank Appreciate you. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Yeah. All right, Steve LaBranche, Treasurer's Report. Okay. How's the money? Um, <laughs> still got some? Yes. Oh. That's, thank you for coming in. Thanks. Okay. Thanks Good night. Again. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll make this brief. Um, here we are in November. We're, we're basically finished our heavy duty spending at this point. Um, so I just wanted to mention that, um, that we are not uh, in any I have no concern about us going over budget with either one of our warrant articles. Um, the the a lot of the a lot of the lines are um, spent at this point, and there are a couple of things that were overspent, and there are several things that uh, are under. But the the uh, the point that I wanted to make is that we are. Uh, going to finish the year with, and there's there's no problems um, and no worries about going over budget. Okay. Any any questions from anybody about the? I I didn't make extra copies because I didn't know how many people were going to be here, um, so I provided a, a copy, a year-to-date copy to the commissioners and uh, and our marketing director as well. Anybody that wants this information. Just give me a phone call or send me an email, and I'd be glad to send this out. It's public information. The, everything is line by line. It shows you uh, what we spent year to date, which is right up to today, and what we actually budgeted. And um, it's, it's, it's very simple, very clear. Anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to, to contact me. I'll be glad to. Uh, to explain it to them or give you a copy. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, quick question: mm -hmm. what, what do we have for playground? We have a lot of things that need to be done. Um, at the moment. You have eight thousand six hundred and fifty-four dollars and seventy-four cents available. Okay. okay. I just got a quote of eight thousand thirty-three dollars and twenty-seven cents to repair everything that's. Oh, wonderful! Needs oh. some work. So. If you could please get a purchase order on that right away. Yeah, yeah that's not a deal. Oh, good. Okay, and then. Um, so I'd like to. I, I don't know if I need a motion I, because it's a lot of money. Um, we'll go ahead it's in and the make budget. It. So I'm going to make a motion to uh, purchase. Where is that now? Eight thousand thirty-three dollars cents. Okay. From O'Brien and Sons mm -hmm. to repair existing equipment. Do I have a second? I'm second it. All in favor? Okay, and that so you'll send me the invoice right away. Right now, you can't the new. And then I can it. pay it right away as well. Yeah. Okay, because uh, thank you very much. So if there you, were, when you get it, you can accept it, and then I will pay it immediately. And um, any any other items that you might want to consider looking at? I have a question for you about um, our budget meeting. Oh, we have that budget meeting in February. Just us have a meeting here. To well, we go have over a, our we budget. have a workshop. A workshop. Isn't it in That's January, 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 I think? Okay. Yeah. You mentioned last year there was a, a pro something about the dates, wasn't it? Was that what you were talking about? I don't remember. The date has something to do with the date that we do this and the date we present to the budget, budget committee. committee. Was there not an well, issue? Well, we have there? to make sure that we're ready to go before the budget committee. The, if we do it in if we do it in January, I don't see any problem. If we do okay. it the way we've been doing it, well, there's plenty. Last of year there was an issue that you were concerned about. Because, I don't know what it was. I don't know. Because there's a what happens before we go to the budget committee is that I have to prepare prepare that MS seven seven thirty seven uh -huh. for the DRA, and <laughs> and that's they have to do an initial approval because okay. until they do, all I can print out is a draft. And we can't, they can't sign the draft, the budget committee. So that was the only thing that was a, might have been a problem last okay. year. I don't remember. I if something. it was, it had to do with that. But, okay. But um, 
Would you we, suggest that we have this workshop in January as opposed to February, or does it make any difference? Oh, no. I think we should stick with uh, January, which is what we've been doing the last few years, okay. isn't it? I, I don't yeah. remember. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that seems to be working. In January, okay. okay. If we do it in January, we should right. have plenty of time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So any other items that you think you might want to look at, Chuck? No, that, that was the only one I was really worried about. Yeah. We just got the parking lot striped. It looks great. Yep. And I did, yeah, you've got the check right there in your hand. That's why it's closed right now. There's one line that's, that's half painted because oh. someone was parked there, but they promised me come back. they will come back and paint that <laughs> half a line. <laughs> and, and as we work on the budget for next year, we can make some adjustments to a few of these lines. Yeah. Um, that, you know, that, for instance, movie night comes to mind. We didn't, prior years, we never had to pay for the movies, mm -hmm. and then this year we had to, yeah, the licensing. So right. there are some things, but we're, it's nothing that's major. I think Country Week's going to have to be tweaked. That's well. going to be yeah, there's some tweaks, but we can work on that at that yeah. uh, at that time. But but the point that is the best part of this is that uh, we're not going to overspend, okay. and just so that everybody knows, um, if we don't spend the money, that money goes back to the taxpayers every year. Okay, so just so that you know that it's not being, um, <laughs> it's not being, it's being accounted for properly. Okay. And, and so. by that you mean it's used to reduce the tax Taxes. next year. Exactly. Okay, that's exactly what I mean. And one other thing I'd just quickly bring up is, uh, so we have, of course, the budget is where we spend money, and then up at the, we also have a report here on year to date as far as revenue, and. We have a little bit more money coming from the town of Hampton because of the way that um, we set up the um, we set up the payments with the treasurer. I have a written agreement with her, and we get um, thirty percent the first week of June, thirty the first week of July, thirty the uh, first week of August, and then the remaining ten, theoretically ten, is paid in December. And so we'll still have that little bit of revenue, revenue. so that'll be added to that So uh, just to taxes. clarify, that's our tax money that they're handling for us. That, that they, they owe us. But just people in the audience, Yes. I don't want them to think that that money is a gift. Oh, no, that's no, 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 that's money, money that was collected. <laughs> no, gift. no, that was collected. <laughs> it, and the reason, I, the reason I said 10 percent approximately <clears throat> is that you see in in, in, in September, there's another MS form called the MS-332, three, um, and that's the revised revenues. And the, of course, at the beginning of the year, we, we, approx we approximate uh, that we're going to do, for instance, $210,000 in the parking lot. But we, that's just a number that we, we are guessing at. Um, and then this in September, in order to set the tax rate in October, the, the village district, the school district, the uh, Winnicott district, and the town of Hampton all do the same form, revised revenues. At that time, by the end of September, I have a very good idea of what the parking lot revenue is going to be because it's, the season's pretty much over. And, um, and as you can see, that we didn't quite make where we, what we budgeted, but, but you see, and as, as well, we didn't, we didn't, we budgeted more for the sand sculpture sponsors, and we didn't quite make that. But that's made up. Once I do that revised revenue, they, um, they obviously have to pay. The taxes become higher if we don't meet these, um, what we thought would happen. So then, what happens is that 10 percent um, might actually be a little more than 10 percent this time around. Okay, sometimes it works the other way, and it's a little less. But I don't. When I say 10 percent, I, I, that's why I said it's that number can move around just a little, depending on what we did for revenue in a particular year. Okay. So, all right. Thank you. That's Thanks, you're Thanks, welcome. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you have any old business, Maureen? Uh, the parade. Not old, but it's it's. We talked about it before, so in that sense. December eighth. December eighth. And uh, we will be decorating at, in the parking lot on the 7th at noon if anybody wants to come down and help us decorate the float. I'll bring the hot chocolate. Uh, oh, December. is that all? You bring a donut? Who's probably decorate? Are you? I don't know. I thought 
Glenn was. I don't know. One of the two. We'll one of those this. two people. Why do you want to do it? No, no he doesn't. Um, one of you. But the, um, we'll, what am I going to say? We'll go. We'll be there at noon, and uh, the Continentals will be playing. Bob, you know, you're oh, excited. Well, He'll be playing on the float, yep. He had now, to leave. Do you have your uh, generator again, John? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay, I was going to... Okay. Good. All right, all right. so that's all. We love Tri Rental. Yes. We love Tri Rental. <laughs> did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, so the, you've got the generator set up. Yeah. We did spend some money this year on that trailer. Um, yeah. We had to get four new tires. Right. And then recently Glenn had to spend some more money on it. Some other issue with a with yeah, one of the tires, a wheel yeah. or something, right? Um, and so, but we still, yeah. Nevertheless, um, the you know we have a we have a line for the Christmas parade, and um, and we're doing just fine. Okay. So we'll have the continentals. We've got to get some new deco. Well, we we just couple looked at a couple of things for some the decorations. Reason, yeah, we'll we'll be talking about that. Do you have any old business? No, not really. Sacred Heart have roots? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That's the Knights of Columbus. Chairman of the not you mean anymore. in the parking lot? I moved lot. to St. Thomas now. Do they, they sell trees still in that yeah. parking lot? Yeah. yeah. They sell trees. That would be a place to go to get them. Yeah. yeah. They do. We should get them. The old there. business, I had told you, I was on um, the SOS committee, Save Our Summers. Uh, it was a, um, I was appointed by Governor Sununu, and there's people from the Lakes region, uh, I'm representing Hampton Beach and the Seacoast. There's um, educators. There's people from Canopy Lake Park and the attractions. Every week we've been having meetings in Concord. Um, fantastic room. We're in the executive board room. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I go half an hour early to read all the, the portraits and stuff like that. So, You're up to um, 1850 now? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, it's very interesting. There's a lot to learn. Um, it's not like you can just make a decision because you have 100 towns and 100 contracts with teachers units, unions, and then you have towns that have um, SAUs, which is fine if they're in New Hampshire, but then you have some that some of the kids go to school in Maine and some of the kids go to school in Vermont. So even though they're New Hampshire kids, they have to... So, so there's different reasons, different things to try to figure out. So it's basically save our summers to why, why now are all these kids going back a week or two before Labor Day? And it's amazing how many millions of dollars are being lost um, in revenue because people start earlier and they're not going on vacation and they're not doing. So there's different ways of looking at Maybe is starting after Labor Day, maybe having a, an hourly, um, right now they have to do 175, most towns do 180 days, uh, maybe making up some of the time, adding an extra so many minutes a day to possibly eliminate snow days. So this is the big fear. They don't want the kids to come. Right. So when, when, we, when, we were, when we were kids, they didn't matter. If the, if the bus was sliding down the road sideways, they, they'd still get you to school. Um, so, Massachusetts had them, though. Yeah, they did, yeah. So um, there's a lot going on, and we have to have a report to the governor by the end of November. So we don't have a meeting next week because of... Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. They'll have one more and try to wrap it all up. And it's very interesting. It is, is that the meeting you went to today, this afternoon? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, how does it look to you? Do you think the potential is um, there to? Everybody is for it, okay. except for the teachers' unions. Which I'm surprised by. Oh, gee, is that? <laughs> why, why is that a surprise? Um, I, 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 could you, I could tell you. I could tell you a whole, a whole <laughs> bunch of things, and uh, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't make a lot of friends. No. no. Or I'd make, and so I'm just gonna. That's a I'm gonna, you don't want to say a lot. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna <laughs> tell you what my opinion of it is, um, yeah. but you probably could guess. Um, yeah, I guess. <laughs> so it's not the place for it, but we're getting there. Uh -huh. So uh, we're gonna make the recommendation. Okay. Uh, whether Governor Sununu was able to it off or is, is another thing so we'll mm -hmm. see what happens 
but I just wanted to let everybody know we're working on it. Okay. You know, um, the teachers in general seem to not want to go back before Labor Day. Yeah. But there's, there's, a, there's a, a whole lot of negotiating. And I think the negotiating is, well, what do we get if we give in to you type of thing. So I no, think that's kind of an issue. It's interesting that yeah, South, it help <laughs> <laughs> Southampton is a part of SAU 21, Winnicunit, but they send their high school no, students. they're not part of Winnicunit. No, they're, they're part Amesbury. of SAU 21. Part of SAU. the high school is different, they go to Amesbury. Amesbury. Exactly, really? I was going to say, the high school kids go to Amesbury true. High School. The town yeah. pays tuition to Amesbury. <coughs> Okay. Really? Did, did you that? know Hampton is considering flood days like snow days because of school bus problems uh, down here? Well, how no. about excused absences for the seven people it affects? For <laughs> 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 the seven people who what? It affects. There's one thing that may have a bearing tomorrow. Uh, they're going to vote on it. One of the people that's running for Speaker of the House is Rennie Cushing. Mm -hmm. He has said that he is going to bring the sea, if he, if he does get elected, he will have a lot more orientation toward the seacoast. And he will be looking at the commercial effect at Hampton Beach on things such as this that are statewide. So even though Rennie and I are poles apart on a lot of political things, this is a but local issue. This is not a political issue. This is right. a local mm -hmm. regional issue. So. And I think that uh, if, he, if he were the one to to be elected, he could do an awful lot for him. And I had a, I got to make a comment about uh, Hampton reps and senators over the years. They're, whether they were Democrat or Republican, their first thing was Hampton. And uh, mm -hmm. i got to give them a lot of credit, and I've seen them all work together. I've seen, Fred, you work together with Rennie, and I, it's just Very fantastic. Close. Nancy able to work. And so i, I got to give the, the uh, Hampton contingent like an, a round of applause. So, past president, future. Right. Hopefully, future. Nothing any closer than the, than the failed attempt for the taxation on the, the tunnels from the from the new plan. We worked our butts off on that, but uh, you've got to convince people that live in Coas mm -hmm. County that that's a good thing for them to vote for. They look at it look at it as we're going to lose revenue if we give them tax right. credits, and so you have to sell it all over the state. And sometimes you're successful, sometimes you're not. All right. So that was what? That was all old business. Yep. New business, Bob. Just the, my understanding is the planning board will meet on November 29th to go over these warrant articles as proposed by the Conservation Commission. So anyone who has an interest in it should maybe go to the planning board meeting that night and check with the planning board to make sure my date is accurate. I believe it is. <laughs> So you can give your input. Uh, some people are going to think it's going to put an enormous economic burden on them. It's just getting more information disseminated so people truly understand what it is about. New business? You already mentioned it. The parade. Uh, no. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> All right. Uh, approval of minutes from October uh, 10th. Again, Joan did an excellent job. As always. As always. Do you help her with these? I stay far away from her. <laughs> <laughs> she's working on these things. <laughs> Do I have a motion? Do I have a motion to accept the minutes as presented? I'll so move. Second? I will second that. All in favor? Excellent. Thanks again, Joan. Okay, public comment. Anybody? Oh, goodness. Lots of public comment. Um, Kathy Silver from uh, Blue Ocean Discovery Center. Uh, I'd say Happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas. I'm moving on to New Year's Eve. Um, the Discovery Center will be open <coughs> from 6 to 8 o'clock at night on New Year's Eve for free coffee, hot chocolate. And cookies supplied by the Hampton Bil Village District, Hampton Beach Village District. Um, so please come and visit us. And we're going to close at 8, and then the fireworks will be going at 8 15. Um, Meredith has asked me to remind you that the state will also be open that night from 6 to 8, so you can go from one location to the other in preparation for the fireworks. So we hope to see you all then. 
Okay. Anybody else? Question. What day did you say you're going to work on the float? Is that December 7th. December 7th at 12. I have a thing on here that says that the parade is on the 1st, not the That's 8th. what they said at the school board meeting last it's night, too. It's on the 1st. The 1st. That okay. sounds more like it because it was on the third last the year, the second. Okay. The Christmas I think that's, lighting is Friday night. I think that's December, true. It'll be less work November thirtieth. What? Yeah. yeah. Ah. So okay. So work for us. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's more <laughs> likely than it? not. I have no idea. I I wouldn't be surprised. So the thirtieth. So, the thirtieth oh. is the is tree the uh, tree lighting, and the first is the. Parade. Yeah, that sounds right. That does make sense. So, um, let's, let's, well, I didn't get, I got that from other sources. That wasn't my, okay, so the 30th, we will be in the parking lot then. What day, that would be Friday, is, the 30th. This is the, the Experience Hampton website. That's okay. the first. It says uh, Saturday, December 1st, 2018. Oh, thank you for that. 1 p.m. to 3. Okay. <laughs> so, we'll at the 30th, we'll, we'll be decorating then. Yeah. I'll call Glenn and we might high. tell him. Okay. 30th. So, we're going to need those, uh, yeah. those yeah. banners pretty soon, huh? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'll be up there tomorrow. I'll get it done. Yeah, okay. I know you all. So, that I'll just we call need, Glenn and tell him. Huh? Reefs. I'll tell him. Yeah, Glenn can get those at Lowe's if, if he has to. Them, okay. When does the, um, the the Cubs I think the Cub Scouts do the wreaths? Where do they do uh, them first of no, all? No, they deliver them to you. So if there's anybody from the Cub Scouts that yeah. can get us some wreaths, yeah. give me uh, give me a call nine two six three three six four, and if we can get them before the. 30th of November, yeah. we'll buy them from you. If not, we'll have to buy them at a, at a store. Okay. Huh? And, and yeah, and uh, any other uh, organization like that that sells wreaths? How about all the other decorations? Like what? The garland and stuff like that. I think there's a lot of it in there. It's like we have a lot. We can look, John. The door's open. So. We can take a look. No, those wreaths were. Maybe they're in there. I. They yeah. were good they were big. So we, they can were we can look. We can look. I've got the door. Yeah, I think yeah. I moved them in there. Okay. Okay. Well, right. yeah, I'd rather yeah. use those. Yeah. Too. I remember okay. lugging okay. that I stuff around. I bought them at Michaels and got a great discount. Yeah. Okay. And they were good size. Too. <coughs> yeah. Okay. We just right. need a look. Okay. Close okay. So, comments. so the oh. let's re review. Parade December one, from one to three, and decorating November thirtieth. Thank you for the clarification, Fred. John, did you want to say something during public comment? Yes. Oh, All right, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I, I, I know I thought you might get over. Oh. Hi, <laughs> uh, John Kenny, marketing director. I just want to have a shout out to the state of New Hampshire uh, for doing all the work that they're doing. Um, last year, they experienced with one short berm out in front of the house, uh, and it worked. And down by Haverhill Lab, they actually had three mountains down there now. Um, and this year they're actually doing a double berm. So they're doing a big berm and then they're digging out alongside the wall and going down another three feet and then making a second berm. So they're really trying to keep, you know, the sidewalks clean. And honestly, I, I'm myself and a lot of other people that live at the beach and a, a lot of new people are living at the beach because I talk to them when I walk. And they all appreciate. So, you know, I know the state can take a hit sometimes, but what they're doing now is great. And what they do for uh, New Year's Eve with us is also great. John, wait before you leave. Yes. That state, uh, the, the thing there. I believe that um, at that meeting last Wednesday, they also stated they were going to put up a, a snow fence. Snow fence. I'm not sure if it's going to be the old one. We go back many years where they had the wooden slats or they're going to go with the modern one, which is basically just orange. But I think the berms are going to make That's a, a big difference. Yeah. Oh, difference. And, and when they're doing the second or berms, or the, yeah. really the, orange, the ugly yeah. orange thing worked too. They all work. Do you know if they're just doing the south end of the beach? or uh, they No, my understanding is um, they're going to do the whole, whole thing. My all understanding, to, anyways. All the way up to Boar's Head? Probably all the way up to maybe the statue. Mm -hmm. Because what happens yeah. is it's a northeaster, and it just yeah. goes down the whole beach. And you know the people on on uh, Haverhill Lab probably sometimes can have four feet of snow. I mean, uh, sand in front of the houses, and it, it's hard. You know, it's doesn't. You know, you can't plow it, and you can't, and it won't melt. And it's a pretty inexpensive solution to a problem. Yes. 
Absolutely. Don't run away, John. Yes. Yeah, because well, no, because came up here for the quick. camera. The camera was not. We didn't have a camera at the meeting last. Yes. We didn't have a camera at the meeting last Wednesday with the state. Um, so you might want to just mention that they they plow. They have a, a machine that um, that they they do the sidewalks all the way up to Boar's Head, and then they continue. Um, not yeah, they the actually head. continue go all the way to the they're, they're going up as far as they can go. The, yeah. the North Beach is a little problematic because of the sidewalk so s skinny. Yeah. But you know, last year we had an icing problem up there. They went out and bought um, a sander mm -hmm. that really helped out. Um, they really, you know, and the first few years I was up here, first five years, Chuck, you know, they, they didn't plow any they of these. They didn't do anything. No. And now they're plowing, plowing all the uh, the parking lot which helps out with all the winter people in the sidewalks with the you know hello me elderly people i guess walking Everybody that loves trying walking. to get walking done and you know it's it's good for me because it's you know health reasons and, and everyone else i see people out there and you know the the strollers going up and down every day and it's the same people so every of um, course you've got all these new condos and a lot of yeah. new people but a lot of people drive from other oh they drive them down it's a nice flat walk yeah. it's, i it's see this guy enjoyable. every day he's um He's Asian, and he's out there with the ski poles. I've seen him. You've yeah. seen him also. I've seen him. And, he, and he drives here, and a lot of people drive just to do the walk. Um, you know, the beach is great off-season. Last week we had about 30 horses on the beach just going up and down. The people loved it. All kinds of people were out. and um, So, you know, it's... Playground was packed Monday. Yeah. It was freezing. Yes. And it was packed Monday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the, Can we talk in the, about New Year's a little New Yeah, Year's absolutely. But I just want to jump on him a little bit. The playground is open um, year-round. I told uh, the state to keep it open year-round. The reason being is we find less vandalism yeah. if we keep it open than if we keep it locked. So I explained that to them. Uh, state responded very well with the lights being out also. Yeah, and, um, you know, so that at night everyone can walk because it's getting dark so early and they get home from work. Um, New Year's Eve is great. Last year we had to cancel. Yes. And it wasn't doing anything except this wasn't an ice on the. Oh, it was wind. terrible ice. Yeah. But, but the, I remember it was very icy on the sand too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They they couldn't get on the beach okay. so whatsoever. Uh, no, we tried to go down. I know. Tried everything that we could, and it just wasn't going to work out. So uh, we couldn't even get down to the beach. So I'm going to be proactive with that and make sure that the state plows that out because right at the end of the ramp going down, yeah. there's a big ice mound. Okay. And we couldn't even get down. You couldn't even get down the ramp. So, but you know, hopefully this year will be great, and everyone seems to come out, and they very much enjoy what. Yeah, two years in a row we canceled. No. No, no. 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 just us. That's the only one you canceled. That's the only one. One canceled. was really, really cold, but just it wasn't canceled. Cold. Yeah. yeah. Stay over there. <laughs> yes. This is Moa. Oh, I remember. <laughs> I remember. This is Moa. I I just want to. I know in the past on New Year's Eve, it seems like we had entertainment. Didn't we have a DJ? No. What we do is I get those lights and I throw those lights on the stage. Well, we had, there was no, music. We were going to, but then we canceled to. the whole thing. He, we were going to have yeah, one last year. Yeah, we were going year. to. It's the year before, was, didn't yeah. we have a DJ? Yeah. No. I don't lights. think so. Yeah, no. lights. Yeah. 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 But yeah. we were going to have a DJ last year, but since we canceled everything, we said Okay, okay. but are we going to have a DJ this year? Are you going to spin some records? I don't know. We can get Michaels. Agreeable to doing that. Yeah, again. he'll yeah. do it if or we ask. Or the Clark. Him. I mean, it's early enough so that they can do our gig and move on to something else. Do you know else. what the winter schedule for the bar firms will be? The the who? The bar firms. Oh, the bathrooms. Will any of them be open? Oh God, that was a great. Well, they that probably was, will be open that night because they have an open no, house I, at the. No, I uh, don't mean New Year's Eve. I mean the. Well, you're jumping all over the place. They mentioned it the other night. Yeah, they mentioned. Uh, I know the the I main one seven, stays open seven. Yeah, they did talk about it. I forget. Is that though. going to be? Year round for some of them. The year rounds are going to be at the statue, the middle stage, in the south basement, um, and I think actually up um, High Street. No, High Street. Yes. And the other ones will close because they're not winterized, okay. which is uh, North Beach and probably you know up by Genesis. Genesis Beach. That's sure. another another they example did. of state cooperation. Yeah. They used to not be open. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They used to open like second week of May, third week of May, and yeah. then be done after after Labor Day. So Been down here many away. times during the winter time. You're going to go to the bathroom any place on the beach. So uh, our, they find places. Our interaction yeah, with the state has been very positive. We have no problem. 
No. And I talk to them all the time. Kathy talks to them all the time. Yeah. Meredith is wonderful. <laughs> Lori is great. Steve, they, they, they all try to help out. They like the beach as much as we do. And they're trying to be proactive. I'm very happy that they're going to try to do something with the screening for the pigeons. You know, that's, yeah. I want to go up there with the BB gun, but Some I don't think that would go over well. <laughs> But, and I, I, the state again, um, you know, there's an, there's an old guy we all know, Frank, yeah. and Frank's great, and God bless him. Uh, but every, every Monday night, I'd say, Frank, can you get down there? You know, uh, it's Monday night, um, right at the bottom of the ramp, people coming and going all day long. The sand is this deep, and I've got strollers coming down for the movies and carts and stuff like that. And, I, and also the trash cans, they empty right before the movies because... You know, you get 600 people. They all go get an ice cream. They get a pizza. They bring their, you know, whatever popcorn um, and stuff, and they fill those cans up. So luckily, you know, they worked with us on an all-new project, and they're there every Monday. So hats off to the state, Meredith and Frank. Thank you. Any other questions? I think that's it. No. Thank you. Well, I do want to mention that since you're there, uh, <laughs> the um, I just wanted to mention. Because we talked about doing budgets. Yes. And in, in, de in January, getting our budget ready for next year. And I just want to say that last week, the Budget Committee met with the Fire Department and the Police Department, and the details for the, uh, for the fireworks that was discussed. And the, um, it was brought up as a question somebody asked uh, about that. And it was, it was clearly stated that the commissioners have an agreement with the selectmen of the town of Hampton. And so the town's contribution is to pay for those special details. Okay? If that was discussed. It was basically put to bed. Great. So I want to make, right. make sure that that's Hooray. something that Thank we, you, town of we know as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, uh, Chief Thank, Thank you very much, we <laughs> <coughs> Thank you, John. You're welcome. Buddha, anything? We do, have, we do have great relationship with both chiefs, and uh, i got to thank them for, for everything mm -hmm. they do for the town and to keep the beach safe. And they're just they're fantastic, so I definitely okay. won't put that out there. I would have the DPW director as being pretty supportive. He doesn't have the same functions here as the the fire and police chiefs, but there are times he's really stepped out of his Definitely. zone to help. Mm -hmm. All right, closing comments. Bob. Thanksgiving is coming. Let's be thankful that we have each other and maybe lower our tones a tad nationally. Love your political enemies. I just I talk about being thankful. I can't get the people in California right now out of my mind, and uh, God bless them all. And hopefully, things will get better, and they'll get rid of those fires. It's crazy. It was nuts. All right. Uh, on that note, we'll adjourn this meeting. Everybody, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you, Channel Twenty Two. Yes.